Hey, what's going on guys? Leo. So let's go ahead and dive on in here. We had the FOMC meeting today with Fed uh, Jay Powell. He ended up cutting rates by 25 basis points, bringing the effective funds rate down to 4%. Now, the other thing that they did was uh, they ended qu the quantitative tightening or, or they're going to end it on December 1st. Now, that's a really big deal because basically the Fed has two mechanisms that they can use to either stimulate or to stimulate the economy or to control inflation and because we've had all this high inflation everybody's familiar with that because you know the covid all the money printing uh what they can do is they increase interest rates because that raises the cost to borrow money which sucks money out of the system the other method that they can do is uh, they will do what's called quantitative easing which is where they purchase securities like mortgage-backed securities which puts liquidity back into the system. It's it's more stimulatory. So what they had been doing was quantitative tightening, meaning that they were selling off uh, assets like mortgage-backed securities from their book. And so that is basically sell pressure on the market and it pulls liquidity out of the market. So basically, uh, inflation is caused because you have too much money in the system and the Fed can either uh, they can basically suck money out of the system through interest rates or the quantity of tightening. So now that they've ended that, that means we're moving into a more favorable liquidity environment. That means assets like Bitcoin, crypto, stock market, it's going to be easier for them to go up because we're stimulating the economy now. So the other thing that they did with, uh, with the announcement that I thought was kind of interesting is that they said that they're going to roll over mortgage-backed securities payments into buying treasury bonds. Now, this isn't technically... Uh, quantitative easing because they would have to be it would have to be new net purchases on adding assets to their balance sheet um this is more like an enhanced uh basically like an enhanced normalization uh, is basically what this is so now uh you know this looks good this looks good for the markets we'll just have to see how they react right now they are down a little bit but hopefully they they come back now we're going to move over to some uh, some solana drama so uh, there's a rumor going around that basically Western Union uh, decided to launch stable coins on Solana in 2026. And so there's a rumor going around that uh, they had to write a $25 million check in order to uh, get a six month exclusive deal with Western Union using stable coins on Solana exclusively. Uh, and so this has caused a lot of uproar. Apparently, uh, people like Mert are very upset. And so what I did was I tweeted out, you know, rumor, and I always do that. Whenever I hear, whenever there's a big rumor going around, I always specify that it is a rumor because I'm, you know, I'm of the opinion where there's smoke, there's fire type of thing. And this isn't the first time that we've seen these types of accusations come up where Solana is paying people in order to use the blockchain. So I put out, you know, rumor Solana paid Western Union 25 million for a six month stablecoin exclusive uh, Mert kind of tweets back that uh, he's basically saying that I'm salty uh, that my, that, uh, a researcher left Ethereum layer twos went down during the AWS outage. Uh, and that's something that happened while I was out of town, but the, basically what happened there was Amazon had a massive outage. And so you have a lot of, uh, infrastructure that people whom build on Ethereum have at Amazon data centers, but Ethereum itself did not go down. Right. So Ethereum, the chain itself did not go down. What you saw was like wallets that are hosted on Amazon. You know, those wallets became inactive, things like that. So, you know, I mean, Ethereum functioned exactly how it's supposed to. And this lends a lot more credibility to why people are going to move to stage two uh, rollups where they decentralize their sequencers, because now you have 100% uptime, you're not going to have these issues with it being in a data center. So, you know, I mean, it's Ethereum didn't go down, right? You know, if you have an airport and you have one of the gates that's closed, it doesn't mean the whole airport's closed, right? That's that's why there's a lot of layer twos. That's why there's a lot of different things that are built on top of Ethereum. If something built on top of Ethereum goes down, it doesn't mean the whole chain is down. That's why you have this diversity within Ethereum itself. I mean, we diversify even within the client teams, you know, for, for uh, your consensus and execution clients, you have multiple clients. That way, if one fails, the whole system doesn't go down. It just continues chugging along while that client team, say Nimbus or Nethermind or whoever, they fix whatever bug occurred. Anyway, so he gets upset that claiming that I'm starting the rumor. And so I link to someone that posted early this morning and it was like eight o'clock uh, saying that, you know, I'm, I'm not starting this rumor. I'm just reiterating it, which uh, further kind of upsets him, I guess. But what's interesting is that if you come down here, uh, he actually confirms that there was a deal done. So uh, he says, and yes, there was a deal, obviously, just like every 
uh, BD, if you don't know, that's a business development uh, deal ever. Uh, but the terms I suspect are very, very off. And so I had, you know, responded like, what are the terms? So, you know, it, to me, like, it, it's very suspicious that you have to pay people to get them to use your platform. You know, if that's what's going on here, which to me, it, yeah, obviously, you know, it, what, because Western Union essentially has no benefit. There's no incentive to them to say, yeah, we're only going to use this one blockchain for our stable coins. It's like, okay, why? Because now you're just cutting yourself off from potential other ecosystem flows like Ethereum, which is massive. That's why, you know, I mean, we can take a look here at, you know, so I mean, you come over here to growthepie.com and you can see there's something like 100, I'm just going to round up, 190 billion stable coins on Ethereum. You come over to Solana, they got like 14 billion, 14.5. So it doesn't make sense for for them to say that, well, we're not going to, you know, we're only going to use this smaller chain that's got a smaller ecosystem and smaller demand unless they were paid a lot in order to compensate for that loss. So, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. I think if there was nothing here to the rumor, they wouldn't even be upset about it. But, you know, that's not where, what we're seeing. Uh, in fact, if you come over here, he, he then got upset again. And so he, then now he just straight up lied, which is what we typically see from Solana people, and this is why they piss me off so much, is because they continually lie, they re misrepresent facts, at least, you know, I disclose this is a rumor going on, but he just comes out completely and says that he claims that the, uh, I guess he's saying the Ethereum Foundation paid $125 million to things like uh, Robinhood, and if you're unfamiliar, Robinhood is building a, a Ethereum Layer 2 on uh, on Ethereum, uh, so he's also claiming that he, they're they're paying all the layer twos. I'm not really sure what he's talking about there. But so I immediately fact check. You know, I come down here. Hey, Grok, any evidence Ethereum paid Robinhood 125 million to build on Ethereum? And we can see here that Grok uh, Grok had responded saying that uh, it searched financial reports, crypto sources, but found no public evidence that Ethereum or its foundation paying uh, paid Robinhood uh, 125 million to build on it. And so then I went on to continue to do, kind of get more clarification. Uh, I said, interesting, why did Robinhood opt for an Ethereum Layer 2 over building on Solana? Robinhood op, uh, chose Arbitrum Ethereum Layer 2 for its ecosystem connectivity compatibility with other players and to avoid liquidity fragmentation across networks. Their GM noted it enables maximum participation without siloed tokens. Arbitrum's stylus also supports uh, Rust for easier integration. So after fact checking his post, he got upset again, said, you know, wait, hold on. You know, I'm, I'm the one spreading these rumors, which I am not, I am just reporting on the rumor. I did not originate this rumor. Uh, but if someone does the exact same thing, uh, I'm crying about evidence. Yeah. The difference here is that I reported, I said, this is a rumor and you just completely made up stuff just on the spot because you were angry. So we come down here and we can take a look at, uh, now I will say, if somebody just lied and made this up, fine. Then, you know, okay, that's that's bad. They shouldn't be lying. But that's not what happened here. So I went ahead and asked Rock again, can you confirm a rumor that Ethereum paid Robinhood to build a layer two or is Merck just making stuff up? So uh, Grok responds, after searching web sources, recent X post, I found no evidence or mention of a rumor that Ethereum paid Robinhood 125 million to build an Ethereum layer two. So, I mean, he's just, just making stuff up. I mean, which is really just not a good look. And so, I mean, again, how do I know that a deal was done? Well, he says, yes, there was obviously a deal done, but he failed to specify the terms of it. So anyway, we're going to move on from that drama. So something interesting came out that uh, PayPal teams up with OpenAI to power instant checkout in agentic commerce on ChatGPT. And, you know, I think this is really interesting because as we move towards a world where you have these agentic AIs that are building on the Ethereum ecosystem, and I'm not saying that this specifically is on Ethereum, I believe that these things will be built out on Ethereum. It's going to be interesting because you, you end up in this situation where you have AI agents that are just doing automated tasks, hiring other agents to do tasks on Ethereum. And so you basically have these users for Ethereum that never sleep, that continuously run and, and do tasks and whatnot. So it's just a really interesting watching this entire thing unfold and, and how, uh, how fast it is growing. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up today's episode. Uh, I'm going to be getting back into the sweating of things now that I'm back from Alaska. So until next time, y'all take care.